What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat and today we're checking out Eratus, Lord of the Dead. Which is kind of like a reverse darkest dungeon. That's the best way I know how to describe this game. It's a reverse darkest dungeon where you're invading the overworld with handcrafted zombie minions as a lich lord in order to conquer humanity and cast them asunder. It's a pretty fun game. I put some time into it and I've played the demo and I've also played like a bit of the actual beta extension that it has now or the alpha extension that they have right now that they've offered to me. And I found the game to be pretty fun in all honesty. So we're going to start the game off. We'll go with a new game. I can't play on more pain mode until I do the tutorial. So we're going to do the tutorial, but the tutorial is actually like a full on dungeon. So you're still going to get a pretty good feel for the game. Uh, we start out with two minions. We have a skeleton and we have a wraith. Uh, our skeleton has a couple of abilities. He's got unassuming strike. We got show them their place, which is a physical attack that we can only use from the third slot. We've got astounding fortitude, which we can't use in the tutorial. We've got smite and we've got shield bang. We're just going to start off by smacking this guy in the head. Sounds good to me. His HP has been reduced. You don't need to know that. What you do need to know is that this game is a reverse darkest dungeon because your opponents have sanity and health and you don't. And so if you can reduce the human sanity down, they die of a heart attack, and they also go insane, and they get all the debuffs that they did in Darkest Dungeon. But your minions tend to be a little bit more fragile than they are, and so in between every battle, you'll be, like, crafting new minions and swapping parts out on your skeletons and stuff like that. And so the game actually does a pretty good job of drawing from Darkest Dungeon, while at the same time being not derivative. So it does a really good job of, like, drawing from Darkest Dungeon, but while also having its own cogent idea, which I like a lot. We have Scream over here. Just use Soprano on these guys. There you go. And so they've gotten a debuff, and they've lost a little bit of sanity. So they now get minus four to their attack damage, which is great, because I don't like getting smacked in the head. So I, I think reducing the impact of being smacked in the head is a good idea. 16 damage right there. Uh, keep debuffing. She can't really do anything else right now anyways, because that'll move her to the front line. And I don't really want her in the front line, so that, that isn't where the Wraith belongs. We definitely should not have the Wraith in a front line. She looked like a girl I used to date, dude. I'm not even kidding you right now. Like, I used to date this girl who was, like, super pale and had a face, like, just like that. And when she got angry, she would levitate off the ground and her eyes would glow. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. There's a similarity. All right? There is a slight similarity there. Uh, I guess we can use... Well, I mean... Yeah, we can stress him out. Whatever. 14 sanity damage right there. We'll move forward. Why not? We'll let the Wraith have her time in the sun, even though she lost a shoe. That's unfortunate. There's nothing less fun than doing a dungeon shoeless. There's lots of things to step on in a dungeon. Did he have a heart attack? He didn't have a heart attack, but he's hopeless now, which is cool. So he loses 50% attack. He has no luck. He loses all of his armor and resistances. So yeah, he's having kind of a rough day in the dungeon right now. Uh, not the best time. Do I have a heart attack? Aw, oh, he didn't die of a heart attack. There's a chance that he'll die of a heart attack anytime you hit him when he has zero sanity. So, like, I was trying. Uh, we'll just wipe him out the old-fashioned way. So, he's now done. Victory. And so, now we got a whole bunch of parts that we can use to build zombies. Seems pretty sweet. I'm down with it. Uh, we need to go over to the creation menu. And in the tutorial, it wants us to create two minions. So, we've got to pick and choose which minions we'd like to create. Well, I think we need a frontline fighter. So we're going to make the Dark Knight. There he is. So we'll move him up to the front. And honestly, we could go with a zombie for the second row, or we could go with another skeleton. In the interest of getting you guys interested in the game, I'm going to play around with new stuff, and we'll do a zombie right there. All right. But I will give them cannons instead. Um, I would like to, like, the skeleton. I think the skeleton could be kind of put in a different party, too. Can I not go back? I want to go back into creation. I want to make another monster. I could do a Wraith. What abilities does the Wraith have? So Curse, 7 to 9 damage to the chosen target and the enemy behind it. We've got Necrotic Wind that deals a ton of damage if he's in the third slot. I kind of need somebody that can be in the back slot, though. Do I have anybody that can be in the back slot? I think she can be in the back slot. The Bride of Eratus. So we'll move her up to there. There we go. And so I, I think we've got a pretty solid team now. Let's go to the dungeon. Inside of the dungeon, we have ourselves a layout. Uh, we'll choose Battle Squad 1, and we'll just move forward to that battle right there. All right. 
You carry big boom. Well, good for you, man. I'm proud of you. You carry that big boom. You carry it. Uh, with chest piercer. Yeah, let's go ahead and what else do you have? Think of him. She gets more attack and more dread till the battle ends. We have warning shot, which is a stress attack, which would be pretty cool. I think I'd be okay with that. Or we've got overwatch if an enemy tries to move. Let's just deal damage for right now. So that guy's taking 18 from that arrow that we fired really haphazardly into his chest. He's absorbed all the damage with his armor. Hell yeah, my shift is going to kill me before you do. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Your cries are music to me. So those guys both got debuffed. They hit a lot softer now. Exactly, and so our frontline tank should be able to just absorb that damage without having to worry about it. We have futile hopes. Uh, let's continue. That looks good to me. A little bit of damage out. He's in the front line now. He can do a volley attack. He can do buckshot. He can do an igniting mixture, or he can do more powder. I want him to move back by one row. Can I choose to have him move? Can we do that? Is that possible? I don't know if it's possible. Let's just fire a volley, I guess. At that guy. There you go. He pulled a pistol out of his cannon. Yo, dog, I heard you like guns. That guy has been whipped. So apparently he has more accuracy and he has more damage. Feels bad. Uh, go ahead and finish him off, would you? There you go. It's true. Cease breathing. I need you to be a part of my zombie horde. I've always wanted a zombie horde. And this has afforded me one of a rare opportunity to have my own zombie horde. And so I'm trying to have my own zombie horde right now. Oh, and stab him up. There we go. Get him nice and slashed. I guess I'll volley him too. Yeah, 14 more. I need to kill him before he gets to use his attack, but I think he's going to get to use it before we can do anything else. It's okay. Even with the buff that he had to his damage, we still managed to absorb everything. Continue firing, and he is now dead. Damn, he's talking about making human skin like chairs and stuff. This is turning into RimWorld really quickly. There we go. Everybody now has dread on their attacks, which I think means it drains sanity when we hit people. Oh, he blocked that. That's a bummer. Well, he ain't gonna be blocking for long. I'll tell you that. Keep firing. Man, this guy's got some serious block right now. Some serious block going on right now. Um, I don't really need stress attacks at the moment. I think it's a good idea. Let's just use Soprano to debuff them real fast and make sure they can't hit me that hard. There we go. And then we'll strike back now that all of his block is gone. This dude does have a considerable amount more HP than everybody else. Light him on fire. There we go. So he's taking like a little bit of damage every time he takes a turn. I think it'll add up because he's got a pretty deep HP pool right there. With that deep HP pool, I think we should be able to pull something off here. She really does not have a whole lot of damage attacks, does she? Maybe she does once we like unlock more. We're just like not far enough into the tutorial just yet. Uh, continue firing. He's probably going to burn up on his next turn. Yeah, there we go. Another All better. My so we got the scroll of skull fall. We got some bones. We got a heart. We got a skull. We got some flesh. Sounds good. I'm okay with it. Uh, so we need to equip Erratus with an artifact. So artifacts are powerful items that allow us to use Erratus in combat in order to kind of modify the lay of the field. I kind of want to swap out the Banshee for something else. Can I do anything in creation that'll give me anything else? Like, the Banshee's cool and everything, but she's not that cool. What abilities do you have? Can you, like, function well from the third slot? You can. Let's make a Wraith. See if, well, we'll see if the Wraith does better. We'll put the Wraith over there. She can go hang out in that other group. The Wraith also has that really cool hood, so... Like, style-wise, I think he's kind of winning right now. On both sides, we have Healing Springs or we have Treasure in front of us. I want Treasure. Let's go treasure. I want... Let's go treasure. Uh, uh. All right, so we got a pick. We've got a hatchet. Enemies are more likely to escape. We've got a grappling hook, which gives our minions luck, accuracy, and evasion, or it can have the insurance deal. After a victory, we get a 100% chance to receive an artifact for every minion that was destroyed. I'm going to go with that one right there. That sounds... That sounds... That sounds good for my collection. Let's go ahead and throw that on real fast. finds its way. All right, let's send Eratus and our group off this way to murder more. How much damage can we cause? Ooh, Skullfall. What does that do? 10 magic damage to all enemies. Sets damage. Ooh. Say hello to my burning friend. 
That did a that cost us a lot of mana, but it was a really cool ability. So I'm gonna give it a pass for right now. These guys have a dangerous double attack, or at least they did in the demo. So I'm going to it. Oh, maybe they nerfed it. Never mind. It looks like it got nerfed. What does this guy do? He's got a stress attack. He loses evasion and all of his buffs. We've got ghostly fire. So deals seven or nine damage to the chosen target and the enemies behind it, and then curses them for two turns. Dealing. Oh yeah, that's nice. Let's do that. I like that. That sounds good. So now they're burning and they're cursed. What did that do? Traps, abilities of which are limited to one specific position depending on the specifics of the trap. You can receive negative or positive effects. Ow, dude, you're going to throw a trap on me? Lame. Oh, he moved my he moved my guys around. I guess we'll do bombardment then. I don't want to do bombardment, but he moved my guys around. I don't have a choice. Uh, stab that guy in the face. I want him to die. I don't like the looks of him. How much HP does he have left? 13, so he should burn up. Uh, let's focus our damage on him. I think both those guys are going to die from dots. Oh, never mind. Apparently he had some kind of absorption or something. Or maybe I'm just bad at math. It could be either or. Slay him. Being born was your first Opposing me? Your last. There was a bit of a delay on that voiceover. A little tiny bit of a... Oh, enjoy this cannon fire. How you like me now? Uh, I'm just going to like cannon this guy. Why not? Oh, you missed? You had one job. Cannon that man in the face and you missed. How could you? <laughs> this never gets old. How could you? I think we'll probably just try to kill this guy. I think that sounds like a suitable fate. We've got Ghostly Veil. We've got Evolution. I uh, hit him with that right there. I mean, it's a little bit of it's a little bit of stress damage and a debuff, so I could take. Ow! You whipped me. Stop it! Stop with the whippings. The whippings are unacceptable. Morale has improved. I swear. This guy's got a lot more HP than I expected. Put flames of love on him. There you go. A little bit of a little bit of fire to make him think about what he's doing over here. What does that do? A stress attack? Yeah, do some stress. Let's stress this man out. That was pretty explosive. I enjoyed it. I don't like this guy being in the front row. This guy being in the front row is an issue for me. Well, another combat down. Oh, nice. We got we got a talent point. Sweet. I need to find like a healing spring. We got like a healing spring around here. I got to unlock a new talent. Where do I do that at? Uh, talents. There we go. So, talent trees, they're talent trees. They work exactly how you figured they would work. They give us some more, like, spells and stuff that we can do. They give us passives. So, fair enough. Chosen minion loses luck and gains attack and dread till the end of combat. Stoke the flames so ignition gets extended by one turn. We have alchemy over here, which will give us a better chance to get artifacts, a better chance to get... Architect souls so that we can build inside the graveyard. That's right. There's a city building aspect to this game, too You can actually see it right here. I'll show it to you. Oh We can't open the graveyard, but basically we've got a graveyard that we can build It's got a bunch of different places where you can trade resources in order to build it up It's pretty sweet and each of the buildings gives you different like abilities and stuff allows you to place parts in a minion uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and increase my chance of getting parts. That sounds pretty good. And then we'll also take, I guess, Relic Seeker, because I like Relics. Relics are good. Like, Relics don't cost me anything, and they give me a bunch of goodies, so... Bunch of combat that way, and no heals anytime soon. Let's go on a quest with our battle squad, I suppose. Your hordes grow, shambling forward to the dark hymn of necromancy. Yet that melody is not the only thing they hear with their unsightly ears. A few minions report the sound of whales coming from the other side of a rock wall. Upon further inspection, it's not a rock wall at all, but a cave-in, and it seems that a bunch of miners are trapped on the other side. You could always use more fresh bodies, but is it really worth your time to save these souls? Uh, yeah, the zombie can take care of it. The hulking undead raises his cannon and slams it into the rock with inhuman strength. The blow is powerful enough to clear the path instantly and shock the gathered humans back, their eyes falling upon the horrid face of their liberator moments before they are torn to shreds. Oh, nice, so we got some free parts right there. I like free parts. I'm going to try and go for that healing spring right there, I think. So we'll dive on into another combat, although we are getting a little bit of attrition right now. 
So he's going to whip that guy forward. All right. What is that, dude? He's a conscript? Well, he missed, so conscription fail, I suppose. Yeah, just start oh weeding him out. Ooh, comes. a 34 damage crit. Nice. Please don't hit me with a hammer. I don't like that. Please don't hit me with a hammer. Hitting me with a hammer is unacceptable. It goes against our standard operating procedure. I don't appreciate it. Uh, let's go with... I guess volley's fine. It's imperfect, but it'll work for right now. He missed with his hammer throw, so that's good. I don't have to worry about anybody being shifted around. What else do we have? We have Dread. We have Ghostly Veil. But that moves him back by one? Okay. I guess I'll just do Necrotic Wind. Aw, he boobity trapped me. That wasn't very nice. All my zombies want to do is give you a hug and welcome you to the, the, die, the undying embrace. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Like, that's all that we want. We don't really want to hurt you. Like, we just want you to be one of us. We're inclusion. We, we are a force of inclusion. All right? We just want people to be a part of this great stampede of murder. I could cannonball right now if I was feeling particularly inclined. I'm going to light that dude on fire, though, so that he takes a bunch of damage. Sinister Strike? What does that do? At the beginning of your next turn, deal 190 for... Oh, God. Okay. Will overflow. I suppose that was good enough. I mean, what more could I ask for? I'm trying to kill this guy before he gets to his turn because he's about to totally bum rush us, but I get the feeling we're going to get smacked. How much stress does he have left? See if you can stress him out. So he's got insanity. He deals stress damage to his allies. Okay. Uh, igniting mixture, maybe? Oh, cool. He drove somebody else insane, too. Nice. Driving people insane is fun. What does he do? He increases his damage, but he also takes more damage. All right, well... If he's dealing more damage, let's hurt him first. I'm kind of spreading my damage around right now, but that's because I haven't played it enough to, like, memorize who the priority targets are when I attack. Do... Terror Wave? Yes. Aw, oh, he didn't die of a heart attack. I was hoping he would die of a heart attack. Bummer. And that guy's still up, too. Feels bad, man. Feels bad. Shoot him! Perfect. Alright, so he's been gotten rid of. We are taking a nasty amount of damage right now. So he's got Sinister Strike again. Kill him before that comes to fruition. Yeah. Oh, good. We got block right there. Hell yeah. Okay. Use our little magic shield in order to block that off. The little shield below his health bar, one is for physical and one is for magical. So he gets one free pass on physical, and he gets two free passes and negations on magical, in case you were wondering where I was seeing that at. Mine is the we are obviously victorious right now. We got a bunch of level IQ 40 brains. Okay. Let's see here. Minions will evolve and can be improved in multiple ways. So this is a new mechanic right here that I haven't seen. Uh, so we can upgrade one of his abilities. So we can turn it into Wind of Oblivion, which moves him forward by two. Oh, no, it knocks the enemy back by two. Or we can go Necrotic Squall, which removes all buffs from the target. They lose evasion. It looks like that's just a damage increase in the stress damage. We also have Cold Grasp over here. Okay. Maybe we'll go... The 
and moves him back by one in both cases. What's the difference for two rounds? Oh, it's 35 evasion, and that one is the duration. Okay. I think that might be pretty good. I'm going to do that. That seems pretty good as a buff. This guy right here, we can increase his damage with Grand Volley. Or we can make it an accurate volley, which ignores the enemy's resistances. What can we do with... Uh, I really, really like the igniting shot. What can I do with igniting shot? So we can make smoke bomb. It deals damage, and it also does stress damage per turn. They lose luck, accuracy, and evasion. Or we can set the targets on fire. Oh, really, it ignites two enemies that way. I kind of like the accuracy debuff. I think I'm going to go with that. And then with this dude, if I could just make his attack hit harder, I'd rather do that. So let's do... Yeah, let's just make him hit harder. That's his main job is just to, like, cause damage. Is there anything I can do to heal these guys? Okay, cool. Improve our minions by using a brain. I was wondering why it gave me those brains right there. Where are the brains at? That instantly levels up minions. So he's got an IQ 20 brain. Gotcha. Well, where am I? There we go. I don't know if I want to level him up, actually. I think I would rather level this guy up. I like the Dark Knight. I identify with the Dark Knight. Oh, you got two level ups. That's pretty sweet. All right. So hollow stare right there. Uh, we can make it do even more stress. Or no, deals 140%, so 15 to 18. Oh, okay. Or we can have it be... Oh, that'll increase the debuff portion, gotcha. I'll probably just go for the flat amount. That sounds better to me. And then Dark Tithe. I don't think I've actually used that much. We have Unfeeling Aggression that moves him forward by three. All is dust. Let's see here. Deals additional damage. A critical hit will do. Get back to battle. I think I'll start with that right there. That looks pretty good to me. So this dude's pretty upgraded right now. He's feeling pretty good. Uh, the Bride of Eratus has gotten a level up as well. A critical hit will stun the target. I don't know if I want stun or if I want... 250% crit damage. Flames of Love also looks like it'll increase its damage. Or we can set them on fire for three turns. My I think I'm going to go with that right there because that plus three to attack is going to make all of her attacks hit harder. So, like, I feel like you kind of have to build a certain way and kind of hyper-focus a little bit. It's just the way that I'm feeling. But she's going to have to get pulled for this fight because she's too wounded. He's going to have to get pulled, too. Let's go to the creation room. We'll put in the skeleton on this one. I'll probably actually make a second bride. Oh, honey. There we go. So wonderfully rotten. And then when we get to this right here, we'll swap in the guys that are wounded. The sacrificial altar. By sacrificing minions, we receive items and artifacts. Interesting. Maybe I should create a skeleton or two. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff laying around, right? Why not? Just like, just something I can throw at the sacrificial altar. Sacrifice a minion to gain special resources. So I've got to choose one of these. A golden tooth. Etched bones. You start at position two. We've got steel spikes, which give armor. Upon receiving damage, you get more attack back, too, so you berserk a little bit. We've got a Misericord, which gives plus three damage. If you start turn at the third position, you restore Wrath and triggers up to three times. A Broken Sword. I'll probably go with that right there. That sounds all right to me. And then what we can do is we can jump back into here. And if we open the Dark Knight, we can take... Oh, we got all of those? Oh. All right.
Give him a gold tooth, I suppose. Sounds all right. He starts at position two, so that's the item for him right there. Perfect. Looking pretty good, and we can rotate that stuff around too. Let's go ahead and dive on into this battle right here. I'm ready to fight. I'm enjoying this. I'm actually really, really liking this game. Now, the production values are on point. Like, it diversifies itself from Darkest Dungeon enough to where it stands on its own two feet and is fun. And so I don't have a problem with it so far. I haven't seen anything that I haven't liked. I'm I'm enjoying this. I'm having a really, really good time playing. Uh, we'll start out with... I think he's got block left, right? Yeah, I'm trying to whittle through his block right now. Ow. Let's not do that anymore. That hurts. That was stingy. Necrotic wind. I don't know if I want to do stress attacks. Let's do a concealing. Oh, that moves him back, though. Mm, I don't want to move back. All right, curse that guy. Whatever. We'll just curse both of those dudes. Oh, okay, so now moving him back is going to be helpful, unless I can't use that ability anymore. And we've got show them their place. That moves him forward by three. That will interrupt a stance. Oh, but we also have shield banger over here. Yeah, let's do that. I mean, we got a good opportunity to really, really mess with somebody's strength. So he's insane now, which means he loses most of his attack, which means we're going to armor absorb pretty much everything he throws at us. He ate up two of my blocks right there, which is a bummer. Ow. Okay. I get your point. Calm down. Yeah, let's deal some damage. How about that? We haven't really dealt a whole lot of damage this entire time. Uh, maybe we can stress him out. So he is now further debuffed. See if we can finish him. Ah, uh, no finish right there, unfortunately. I was hoping, but that's life. They really don't like that skeleton, do they? That skeleton right there is having a rough afternoon. He's getting beat up a little bit. Let's just let's mitigate some of these turns here. We're taking too much damage. Um. Yeah, just stress him out a little bit, I guess. This will be. Oh, cool! He committed betrayal. Nice. And he stunned that dude, so he lost a turn. Uh, let's go with. I suppose smite right there. I don't know if it's better to use the double attack or the single attack. My guess is that it depends if you've been doing a pure damage build or a crit build would be the the big choice there. Uh, continue with ghostly fire, I guess. We will stress them out and deal damage as necessary. Another one bites the dust. A thousand years of evolution looks like. Yeah, pathetic. Another betrayal. This man is doing all my damage for me. How nice of him. Uh, I'm going to use this opportunity to deal some damage to him while he's stunned. This guy is definitely more dangerous than the dude in the front. So if we can, like, start him off, I'm okay with that. Yep, just keep attacking. Bloody him up a little bit. Hey, and there's the kill. Very nice. A debuff, huh? You shined a lantern on me? That's kind of a sucky debuff. Like, look, behold, I shine light on you. I'm like, ah, it burns. Oh, my God. This is the worst. You can actually see how ugly I am now. No. I wanted to see if I could stress this dude out and kill him with stress. So anytime you damage somebody that's got no stress left, they have a chance of having a heart attack, but... I don't know if we're going to get one of those kills today. I'm trying, but they're not making it easy. Man, this dude is resilient. I'm trying so hard to stress him to death, and the game just won't let me have it right now. There we go. He died of stress. Perfect. That little heart icon means that he died of stress. Uh, we got some architect's bones, which is good. And wants me to go to the graveyard and build a building. And we got excavation, we've got the abode of wrath, we've got the obelisk. So the mystical obelisk attracts wandering souls. Every minion next to it generates four to six souls of the architect. 
Oh, that's not where I wanted to go. We can also go with, what is this over here? The library, what does that do? Every minion that studies in the library gives Erratus 40 XP. Okay. We have an Erratus statue. Praising the Necromancer will restore mana. All right. And then we've got every minion exploring the ancient burial ground finds a random part. I'll probably put him on that. Yeah, put him over there. Did these bodies wind up here? And then we'll swap that guy in, I guess. Was there an effort to set me free sometime in the past? Godless, these remains will be used as fuel for my growing army. Oh, so you can create other slots, too. Gotcha. Well, we're going to find some random zombie parts while we're down in there. We're out of time for the day. Oh, my God. I, ran I was having so much fun that I wasn't paying attention to the clock. Uh, this is Erratus. I hope you guys liked it. I really like this. I'm enjoying it. Approaching Darkest Dungeon from the opposite direction is a clever idea, and I'm, I'm enjoying the theme of the entire thing, of being just kind of an evil bad guy. I'll see you all next time. Thank you for stopping on in. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit it with a like. Host me out as a content creator. I will see you all tomorrow with something fresh. How you doing? Take care, everybody.